Welcome to this session of the Beyond the Veil Summit, where we explore the nature of the veil between the worlds. I'm Lisa Bonnies, your host, and my guest for this session is Suzanne Giesman. Our topic today is reasons why you can't connect with spirit. Suzanne Giesman is a spiritual teacher, author, and messenger of hope who guides people to the certainty that love never dies and that we're part of a multi-dimensional universe. Suzanne's gift of communication with those on the other side has been verified and recognized as highly credible by noted afterlife researchers. Her messages bring not only hope, but healing and love that go straight to the heart. And I'm so glad she's with us today. Suzanne, thank you so much for joining us. Welcome. Oh, thank you, Lisa. I love this summit. Yeah, such good information. Absolutely. And you bring a lot of it. So let's start with a really big question. Um, it said, we've all heard this, that there's really only one of us. We're one big being. So if that's the case, then how can we talk about separate beings like spirit guides and loved ones and ascended masters if, if there's only one of us? It's because we're both the one. And I like putting that T-H-E in front of it. The one what? One spirit, one consciousness, one being that's not really a being in the sense of a human being, but simply the state of being, the light of awareness, and these expressions of the one. So I like to use that image of something that most people have probably seen, two faces that if you look at them facing each other, they all of a sudden you see this vase in between them. It's either a vase or it's two faces, depending on how you shift your view. So we can see ourselves as separate human beings with that point of view, but with awareness that we're all connected at our deepest level, we shift and we see as the one. In other words, this one awareness is seeing through our eyes, all of us at the same time. And this sounds like theory, it doesn't actually make sense until you sit in the silence and suddenly stripping away the story of you, all of the elements that pertain to the little I, I as Suzanne, I as Lisa, when all of those dissolve, what's left? This shared awareness, that's the one. Okay. And I'm glad that you brought up the uh, the visual of the, the vases and, and the face or the vase and the faces. We've all seen that one. And I've also heard you compare this to those uh, those 3D images where at first it just looks like a jumble of, of uh, nothingness. But then when you're able to shift your vision, suddenly it pops out at you, a hidden picture. I love that. I, it's something that I, I share in person in some of my workshops, actually with one of the Shift Network courses as well. It's a page full of roses, row after row after row of little roses. And I have people look at it and you move it slowly away, go a little bit soft-eyed, maybe a little cross-eyed. And all of a sudden, this totally three-dimensional rose, part of roses, pops out. I got goosebumps just as I talk about it because it's a phenomenal moment, 90%, mm, 96% of the people who do it can make that rose pop out. If you have an astigmatism, it won't work. But when it pops out, you realize, wow, that was there all the time. But all I had to do was shift my focus, literally, and it revealed itself. Now, this is a metaphor because when we shift our perspective to being the one, it has nothing to do with our physical eyes. It has everything to do with our state of awareness, our state of consciousness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you just mentioned, I think this is a really good uh, segue. You mentioned that some people cannot see if they've got astigmatism or, or something like that. They, they cannot see the 3D image. There are also many people who have a difficulty making that shift in perception and seeing, let's just use that word in finger quotes, seeing the other side, connecting with the other side. Why is it so hard for many people to, to sense this, to see this? It's very simple. There are many reasons, but the primary reason, I pause there to check with my team and spirit. We always talk together in these summits and any anytime I'm teaching. The primary reason is because we are so focused, so caught up in this objective reality, this physical world. 
until my stepdaughter's death, which propelled me on this whole path of mediumship and, and learning about the greater reality, I never took the time to try to connect with something beyond this physical world. And some people, by grace, have the sudden experience of our expanded selves, of the greater reality. There are many ways that manifest. Some people suddenly see a grid physically around the earth with their own eyes. Some suddenly just know they are the light. These are what we call spiritually transformative experiences that may happen spontaneously. I've had several of them, but after I started sitting with the deliberate intention to experience ourselves as the one. My initial intention was to connect with my stepdaughter, Susan, but that, that effort to connect with her through setting aside quiet time every day resulted in so much more than that initial goal. And that led to this, uh, this knowing about the shared reality. It, it, it comes through personal experience. So everybody listening today is going to hear about this and say, I want this, but we have to take certain steps just in case by grace, we don't have those spontaneous STEs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, you, you mentioned your stepdaughter. Um, since that event and since you've developed these abilities, is it your uh, belief, your understanding that perhaps you two had a, a pre-life agreement that this would happen so that you would be sort of, I don't want to use the word forced, but I can't think of a better one right now, to, yeah. to follow this path? There is no doubt in my mind it has been validated with information from her in which she's given me evidence and signs that I couldn't deny that backed up her saying that we have lived many lives in the past. She gave me beautiful gifts to prove what lives we lived together. And then I've even had other psychics show me that it was part of my soul's path and her soul's path, that I would meet her dad, this military man, and we would get married and Susan is his daughter. There's so many things point to the, the divine path that we're on together, all of us on divine paths, but Susan and I, aligned for this purpose because her passing, while just like anybody's loved one who passes, it seems like a tragedy to us here. And depending upon the perspective with, with which you view it, it is a tragedy. But what do we make of that? What results from that? In the case of Susan's passing, literally millions of lives have been touched through the videos I've done based on the discoveries I've made because of her passing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you for letting me ask about that. Um, I yeah. also want to ask about, we're talking about the, the veil, beyond the veil. And sometimes that veil is called the veil of forgetfulness, which means that when we come into human form, we forget that we are part of this one, this expanded one. And some of us, do remember some of us never remember can you talk a bit about this this forgetfulness is it mandatory that some people stay that way or can everybody sort of peek through that veil absolutely not mandatory and it simply is the nature of immersing ourselves as the one in this very interesting very captivating physical reality it is a a state of awareness not so solid when you dig down into the science of what our objective experience is made of. It's made of experience, but it is so captivating. It's as if we put on a virtual reality headset and we forget we can take off the headset. So once you suddenly get this, this little reminder, a nudge from the soul that there might be something more then little by little, you, you learn tools to peek out from under the virtual reality headset and then to take it off completely for short periods at a time, such as in meditation or plant medicine, which I don't use and have never, uh, I, I can't speak to that, but that is one way to remove the virtual reality headset metaphorically. And so once you do that, you remember fully and you don't ever forget again, but you can get caught back up in the reality and that's why a regular spiritual practice, we call it spiritual because it reminds us of our, 
of our oneness, but any practice that will allow you to set aside the focus on this reality and the identification as only human. When we can set that aside, that changes everything. All right, good. So I think this is a great lead up to the next question. If uh, the people that I was talking about, the people who feel like they just cannot make that connection, this doesn't work for me, I don't have that gift, what can they do? Put a big sign up on the wall where you sit and make it the word patience because we all have expectations and most people want it now or yesterday. And they think that they're doing something wrong when nothing, no, the guides just changed me. Not when nothing changes, but when we don't get the results we expect immediately. Because I guarantee if you sit quietly with a single focus, for example, my single focus was Susan, I want to connect with you. And anything that wasn't Susan, I noticed. And if it was my normal stuff that's always going on in my mind, I let that go. If it wasn't Susan, but it was very interesting, I followed that in my awareness. And I started to receive gifts that were not Susan, but were definitely a connection with higher consciousness. So our expectations will limit us. Our assumptions of how long this will take will disappoint us if they're not realistic. We have no idea how each one of us is going to unfold. So it's a matter of just being patient, staying with the practice and noticing what is changing, even if it's not what you expect or you hope for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you make a really excellent point, at least to me, that really resonates because as I was growing up, I wanted so badly to be able to do this, to be psychic and all that good stuff. And uh, because it didn't look like I expected it to, because it didn't look like movies and TV shows had portrayed psychic abilities to look like, I didn't realize I was having this stuff happen all the time, but I absolutely was convinced this doesn't work for me. Can you talk a bit about the 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 false expectations? I mean, I understand Hollywood has, you know, there's a limit to how you can portray what this is really like on film. So, and I've learned recently done a, I've done a lot of research into the brain and because it is a filter to higher awareness and how it limits us. And I've learned that the left brain wants more more more. Once you achieve something, great. That was wonderful. But now I want more. And so we are programmed to look for bells and whistles and to think that we have to have fireworks and booming voices talk to us in our meditation. And that's the goal. Well, what if, what if even holding on to that goal one day when sitting in the silence, you suddenly feel yourself caressed in the arms of love and you suddenly realize you have always been whole and complete and worthy. And what if, even though your goal was to connect with a specific loved one, you suddenly find tears flowing down your face, tears of forgiveness for ever thinking you were anything less than love, or tears because you suddenly realize, I am the love I seek. I learned from my Susan that she held back from me for three years for a reason. So that along the way, I would clear out old baggage I was carrying along. That I would take a look at all of the false beliefs in my belief system that were holding me back from being my highest self. So that I would learn that I have unseen helpers besides Susan who are here with me. All of these were gifts that were not in my original goal. And yet they came because I held on to that goal persistently for three years. And then Susan came through at just the right time for us. So we must learn to trust the bigger picture. It's that simple and that challenging for humans who want more, 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 better, bigger, and faster. I have a great story to share with you. I don't know when the time is for that. <laughs> I would love to hear it, please. Yes, one of my shift network participants, a student from one of my classes in Connecting Across the Veil, recently put a post on the group Facebook page that she's so glad she stuck with it. For her, it was a year and a half of hearing nothing 
from her daughter who she wanted to hear from. And she said, Suzanne, you were absolutely correct. I used your tool of asking my daughter across the veil to share with me something about my son that I couldn't possibly know. And in her mind, when she never before saw images, Lisa, she suddenly saw a white building with white pillars in front of it. I got goosebumps as I share this. 15 minutes later, with no contact recently from her son and not knowing where he was, he sends her a picture of him and his partner standing in front of the White House. <laughs> a big white building with pillars in direct response to her asking her daughter, show me something going on with your brother, my son, in, in right now that I don't know. And she had no idea her son was even in Washington, D.C. This is a huge breakthrough. And it was a year and a half for this woman of sitting quietly. But she will also tell you that every day we open up more and more. We create space. We remember who we are. All these things we've been talking about, Lisa, simply by being patient and dedicated and committed to our own vibration and raising it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you started out as a Navy commander. So it's not like you grew up in a woo-woo, airy, fairy household, is it? Oh, no, no, no. But I do remember back when I was a lieutenant commander and I did retire as a commander, a higher rank, uh, putting a little, asking my husband to put things in an envelope and hide them in the house because I was going to try to astral travel at night. But I hadn't learned enough to understand what the consciousness was that led to those kinds of experiences. And I was not successful and I put it aside. I did not have a regular practice. And so that was probably just planting seeds for what was to come because it was years later that Susan passed. And then I just knew there had to be something more. And I was bound and determined to connect with her. So if you don't have that, that strong, compelling longing, you may be like me. Try astral travel for a while. It didn't work. There's something wrong with me. Not true. I'm obviously validation that we all have the ability, but each one of us may need to persist with it a little more than just giving up like I did in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you mentioned the little practices and you have so many helpful practices. So let's talk about that a bit. What are some practices that can, can make a difference for people who might feel discouraged that this just isn't happening for me? Right. Oh, there are so many. The gifts page on my website, which you can find right on the homepage, scroll down till it says gifts, will lead you to several meditations. One of them is the journey of remembrance. And it's a meditation which helps you just let go of the story of you little by little until all that's left is this awareness, I am. So this is an opportunity to have that personal experience that is your very being, the shared being that we all have of simply being the one. So the journey of remembrance. For a daily practice, my sip of the divine, sitting in peace, three-minute practice. So we're not asking everybody to set aside half an hour or longer every day. How about three minutes? If you do that every day for three weeks as a start, and that's pretty easy, you may find yourself feeling more peaceful, less reactive to those around you. And that may compel you to want to spend a little bit more time in the silence. And then after that, buckle your seatbelt because you're off and running on this path. I would love to ask you to, to lead us in a practice, but first I want to make sure uh, that this is on the SuzanneGiesman.com website, right? That's what the previous practices I talked about were. The one we're going to do now is, I don't know that it's on any, it's not on my website or YouTube. I know I teach it in some of my Shift Network classes, but that's all. Yeah. So this is a great one for getting to know our spirit guides. I know, Lisa, you and I have talked about the fact that so many people including us, are not aware, or you and I were not aware, we are now, that our guides are always present with us. Our spirit guides are on duty all the time. They get to rest when we go to sleep, but they have our back all the time. Imagine how much our lives would change if we all knew this and would simply just shift like I'm doing moment by moment in this session and just ask, what's the best thing to say right now? What is it I need to know right now? And they're right here. 
So the reason we don't know they're right here is because they're so familiar to us. I use this example all the time. Maybe I need a better one, but I can see my hair in the video, but I can't feel it right now. Now, if the wind were to blow, then I would feel it or blow it into my face and I'd feel my hair. Your guides are like that. They're like the hair on your head. You don't feel them because they're so familiar. But when they want to get their your attention, like blowing the wind, they'll use a voice in your head that will sound just like your own thoughts. Or they'll put a beautiful synchronicity in your face. They speak to us in many ways, not just verbal. Put images in your mind. Have someone around you say just the right thing. So this exercise is to give you the experience of what happens when your guides metaphorically go off duty for just a moment, right? When they turn down their energetic signature. So you feel the difference because we're talking about energy here. We're going to ask them to step out of our field, out of our awareness. Now, energetically, they we are always connected. They can't really step away, but they can turn down that light. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. I'm going to take a few extra minutes here so that we get in a nice expanded state of consciousness so that everybody participating can really feel the difference. And that's our goal, to feel what it's like when our guides turn down their light. All right, so everybody just allow your eyes to close for a moment. If you have anything on your lap, just clear it off and just sit or lie down very relaxed. We'll relax even more with a nice deep breath. Breathe in very slowly through the nose, perhaps to the count of four. And now exhale through very lightly pursed lips through the mouth to the count of six. Right away, you should start to feel really good, nice and relaxed. Let's take another deep breath with the goal of becoming as relaxed as possible. Into the count of four. And exhale very slowly, releasing any tension you find anywhere in your body. And now continue breathing slowly, but just let it happen naturally and feel yourself sinking deeper and deeper into the most relaxed state possible. Move your awareness out of the head. It only seems to be located there. And center yourself in the heart. This is where the light within resides that never goes out. The center of you through which you are connected with all that is. Turn up that light in awareness. Visualize this bright white light glowing outward in all directions from the center of your heart. And the fastest and easiest way to come into a beautiful, coherent, resonant state that helps you to connect with all that is, is to think of someone or something for which you are very grateful. What are you so grateful for in this moment now? Feel that gratitude. Send that gratitude outward. And no matter what's going on in your life, the challenges that you're dealing with, they just arose in your thought as I mentioned this, but they are all temporary and they're like dark clouds obscuring this blue sky, bright light that is you. So picturing all these clouds in your energetic field, take in a nice deep breath and we're going to blow all those clouds outward, creating space. With me, let's expand your awareness. And now sitting in this clear space, Become aware of how you feel in this moment. This is what you consider your normal state of being. 
it's a very bright state right now because you've prepared your energetic field for this experience. It's a very expanded state, but you know this feeling as me, as I, here I am. But your energetic field is actually quite crowded with beings who are here to help you. And so we're going to ask your main spirit guide, even if you are not familiar with them, if you have not met them, even if you don't have a name for them, trusting that they are always with you, an integral part of your experience here in human form. We're asking this guide to step out of your awareness now. What is your experience of me now, of yourself now, with your guide's light deactivated? Perhaps you can put it into words. Perhaps it's just a feeling. I'm asking all guides to turn down their light even more. Just for a moment. And now because the guides don't like to leave you for long, we're asking them to come rushing back in to a state of normal presence with you. Send gratitude for whatever you have experienced. Thank your guide for being present with you and helping you in your life. And ask them to make their presence as fully known as possible in the coming days and tell them how much you're looking forward to working with them. With gratitude for this experience, simply take in a nice, quick, refreshing breath and come back to full waking consciousness. I'm curious what you experienced, Lisa. This was, I've done this before, so I wanted to try to do this again and uh, set aside my first experience with that. So today I felt like when I was just feeling, you know, me initially, my field felt very filled with sort of a, a fog of white light and it felt very pleasant, et cetera. Uh, and then when we asked the guides to turn down the volume, it felt like instead of being this fog of white light, like I was in a clear glass of water, like everything just became very crystal clear and very clean, uh, not in a judgmental that the white fog was was not clean, but just very, very clear. And then when they came back, it just kind of went, whoop, and I heard a lot of laughter and it felt like a party <laughs> <laughs> commenced. Yeah. And I wouldn't say that that clearness means that you were more clear without them there. It's just, they're showing you a difference. That's yes. all. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The very first time I ever did this, I'd love to tell this story. I was uh, listening uh, to to the class that you offered at shift when you did this exercise. Um, I was out on a walk. I was walking through a park and I sat down underneath a tree and allowed myself to do this. And this is the first time I'd had this experience up until then. I swore I didn't have any spirit guides or if I did, they were ignoring me. I was <laughs> one of those people who I don't have this. And it was so frustrating. I was so angry that I'm the one person on earth who doesn't have these guides. So I did this practice and I was so amazed by, oh, it's not that they're not here. It's that they're so close and that I just don't recognize that that they're separate from me. So when they stepped away uh, and I, I felt this difference, um, I, I was stunned, amazed and really happy. And then when my primary guide stepped back in, I, I asked... I don't want to forget this experience. How am I going to remember this? And I heard pick up a pine cone because there were plenty of pine cones around. So I picked up a pine cone and I brought it home. And so now I have this pine cone. So anytime that I feel isolated alone and like my guides aren't there, 
I remember this pine cone. I even bought myself a little pine cone charm that I can wear. I love it. You, you and I are so alike in that. I have little reminders all over the place because of the forgetfulness getting wrapped up in this story. So uh, those little things like the pine cone, something you sit right where you brush your teeth every day that you'll see it over and over, but it doesn't become old. Just to, to bring that sense of gratitude to the heart and instantly just reignite in your awareness Oh, you're here. Thank you. I wake up every morning, Lisa, and I put my shoulders back. And that's my physical reminder. I am connected. It's a beautiful practice. Just using your posture to remain mindful. We are not alone. Yeah. Yeah. I can, I can see how that would. Yes. <laughs> that, that's perfect. That's it's embodying the. Embodying. the right. Yeah. Yeah. So, because uh, when we're, when we're sad or in grief, we go inward. The posture just does that. When we do this and put the shoulders back, we are open and connected. Now the guides right away can connect more easily with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I also, I've got another question. As I mentioned, when I did the exercise the first time in the park, I only really noticed that there was a guide. This one guide stepped out and back in. But today I noticed that there are a lot more of them there. Is that because... Uh, the first time I did this, it just didn't occur to me that there was more than one or because today I just happened to have a party going on. What I hear is our intention today was one guide, but the, your guides are going to give you exactly what you need. So you went beyond the instructions today simply because your guides knew you wanted that experience. Okay. That makes sense. That yes. Makes trust, sense. Think, trust in the process. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Wow. So... I, you know, I don't know that I have any more questions. I think we've really covered this pretty well and I don't want to muddy the waters. So I do want to mention your websites. You've got three websites. So let's talk about them. One is SuzanneGeesman.com. Another is DailyWay.org. And the other is TheAwakenedWay.org. Let's talk about the difference between those three sure. sites. All, the latter two go to the website. They're just redirecting to the website. The awakenway.org is very important for, for really understanding who we are. You're not only human, you're part of one big web connecting all that is. And the creative healing force of the universe is love. It truly does change everything. So you can read more about that simply by going to that webpage. The dailyway.org are the daily messages that I channel from spirit. And they can also be found in my free Awakened Way app, which is reaching tens of thousands every day and has a beautiful little inspire button like an oracle that is providing beautiful moments of joy and miracles for people when they get the perfect message with the perfect date on it. Yes, I've got the app and I, I can testify. It really is. It's so helpful. Sometimes it's just uplifting and fun and happy. And sometimes it's really just what I needed to hear today. So exactly. thank you for offering those. Yeah. So um, I wonder before we go, is there anything that, that we've left out that you want to make sure or that perhaps Brenda is nudging you? Is it uh, anything we need to talk about? Brenda's my mediumship guide and she was front and center this morning. Brenda was an administrator. It's just absolutely perfect that you brought her up because I wanted to and I had forgotten. So see, we're connected, Lisa. We never even talked about her before this session. And she focused on children who had challenges in school and taught them to not focus on what's not working. You know, oh, I can't connect. It's not happening fast enough. But to reprogram yourself with positive thoughts. I can't wait till what I hope for happens. But in the meantime, I wonder what's going to happen today. Do you feel the difference in that? In staying positive, noticing your thoughts, what's holding you back and saying, I'm sticking with this because I know I am the one in expression and I do not have any idea what magic awaits me at this level. So bring it on, you know, that kind of difference. Beautiful. Bring it on. Well, thank you so much, Suzanne. It's always such a delight to spend time with you. I so appreciate you. Thank you for being with us today. You are quite welcome. Bye-bye, everybody. All right. I want to remind everyone I've been talking with Suzanne Giesman, and I want to thank you for joining us. I hope you enjoyed this conversation in the Beyond the Veil Summit.